All right, we're back on the uh, IC746, and I've received some transistors. I got them from uh, Ireland, <laughs> uh, Donberg Electronics. Uh, they seem like they're really into radio stuff. They have a bunch of logos on their website here. And, uh, 33 years of doing business, so yeah, they must supply a lot of good ham, ham radio stuff. Uh, their little note here says it's it's a 2SC1972, which is correct. It's a power transistor, uh, 35 volt, uh, let's see, 3.5 amps, 25 watts. Uh, for the Kenwood TS2000, interesting, so it's used in the TS2000. I'm not familiar with that radio, so anyway, it's also used in the ICOM. So uh, I had to buy three of them to get minimum quantity. I think, I think they wanted $30 minimum order or something like that. Anyway, I think they're like 10 bucks each. So anyway, I ordered three of them. I might blow one up. I don't know. But anyway, I've got three of them now. And uh, the... Uh, Transistors, um, let's see if we can zoom in farther down here. Uh, they don't use the, um, the whole length of the transistor, okay? Um, so they don't use the legs. They're soldered kind of flat to the PC board, so we're going to have to uh, snip the legs off. So basically we just leave the fat part of the legs and snip off the... Uh, snip off the uh, other side of the legs. Just leave the fat part. All right, so I will do that. Let me find some um, some heat sink uh, heat sink grease. See if I can make a mess of this. All right, my heat sink grease is needing to be mixed up. All right. Yeah, it kind of gets uh, oily. It looks like it's like oily on the top, and it feels like it's a little bit stiffer, deeper down in the jug. So, kind of need to get that stiff stuff up. And uh, at least I think that's. I mean, I don't know the chemistry of the stuff, but assume that's what's going on here. I'm gonna get a different stick. Okay, so I think we will apply this to the heat sink and then lower it down in place. So hemostats are one of my favorite tools. So I will I will put some goo on the bottom. Not too much, just enough. And lower it in place and release the hemostat. Release the hounds. There we go. Yeah, looks great. All right, let's do the other one. Hmm. Snip the legs off. People placing bets. Is this going to be the last? I've replaced a whole bunch of resistors and stuff. Right? I placed one, two, three, four resistors that were all toast. Well, there could be more, more damage than I know. So far, that's all I know. If I turn this on and it goes poof, I'm going to be an unhappy camper. Yes, unhappy. All right, that looks good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put away the heat sink stuff first. Put a lid on it. You wouldn't, you would not believe how many accidents I've had with heat sink compound. Oh my goodness. Horror stories about that stuff. <laughs> All right, so if we can't put the 
screws back in. They should be a bit magnetic with the screwdriver so I can just kind of lower them into place. There we go. I want to tighten these down first before I solder it. I don't want my solder to crack. And as I tighten it, I don't want the transistor to move, so I'm kind of applying opposite direction on the transistor. All right. These are kind of odd transistors. The, uh, the they're nice. The uh, emitter is on the tab and on the center center pin, so makes makes for this particular case they are. grounding things, they're sending the signals to ground, so ground is at, I mean the emitter is at, uh, is at ground, so this makes it all easy. There we go. Uh, let's see here, I need to push down these pins, make, their, make sure they're low as low as they can go. And then they had a big blob of solder on them. I thought everything's kind of has a big blob of solder. Their soldering hands are a bit, a bit stout. But um, yeah, let me move you over a bit. You're going to be in the way, so I'm going to solder these down. That center pin's hard to, hard to know. You've got solder going underneath. I think it's all good to go now. A little bit more solder on that one. A little more. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Maybe. Nah, that looks good. I think that's good. No one to quit. <laughs> no one to quit. And use your better eyes. Use your magnifiers. Take a look. Let's go ahead and. Uh, Clean it up with some alcohol. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Since I'm here, I'll clean up those surface mount resistors that I put down. I think I cleaned them up once, but I'll clean them up again. All right, so the uh, to recap, <laughs> I replaced uh, a 47 ohm resistor and another 47 ohm resistor. I placed them with 51 ohm resistors. And then I replaced these two, which are one ohm resistors, and so I've replaced those with one ohm resistor, so I have two in parallel, so it's a half ohm. And these things are in, both in circuit, so when you measure it, it'll measure like 25 ohms to ground uh, because of those two 50 ohm resistors. And, um, yeah, yikes. Should we, let's see if we can test this in circuit. Nah, do I want to do that? Nah, I don't want to do that. All right. I think I want to power it up. You know, like I always say, live dangerously. It's easier to work on things that are free. <laughs> it's much easier to work on things that are free. If you've paid a lot for this radio, your handshaking is a lot more when you do this type of work. A little more sweat. All right, let's make some room. I will bring my dummy load over and uh, we will cross our fingers that we see no smoke. We do not want to have magic smoke, especially Irish magic smoke. I think 
That might smell like uh, clover leaves or something. I don't know. All right. All right, I'm hooking it up to my uh, 250-watt, 20 dB attenuator. And then the output of that, it will, will be one watt maximum. And that will go into my radio analyzer, which is good for 60 watts. So it's got 50 on load on it. So there we go. Now we've got a complete 50 on load. And we will take this. It to here and all right I'm going to do one more thing and that is that I know that when I plug this in it powers up the power amplifier directly without pushing the on off switch so I'm going to use my thermal camera to see if anything starts to get super hot. All right, everything looks cold right now. All right, let's plug this in and watch, watch for anything getting hot. I don't see anything. Uh, I'm getting a hot spot right there. Oh, that's not a hot spot. That's a reflection off of the top of the capacitor. No, nope, everything looks fine. Okay, everything looks fine. That's good news. All right, so what we're going to do is change camera angle. Oh, this is not the easiest thing to film. Okay, let's uh, turn down the RF power all the way. We will power it on. And I guess I should use my thermal camera after I power it on, right? I guess that would have been smart to do. So let's do that now. Hello? Is anything getting hot? I don't see anything. I don't see anything. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it into FM mode, uh, 7 megahertz. And we can transmit with FM mode, which will be outputting full power. And I'll be looking here at power output. And I don't see anything, so we will turn up RF power as we do this. And it is going higher. Look at that. It's going higher. It's going to 50%. And I'm, I'm at 50% uh, on the dial here. And it goes up to 100%. Yay! Yay, so I'm gonna figure that all the way back down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think we're good, looking good. Let's go over to the uh, radio analyzer. Okay, we'll go into transmit test. And we will be looking right here at transmit power. And I'm gonna turn it on. And I can go up to, I'll go up to the halfway mark, which is right here. I'm measuring 47 watts. I will take it to 100%, measuring 94 watts. All right, we be cooking. All right, we're cooking with gas now. Is that an old saying? Cooking with gas. We're talking about old sayings. I wanted to run this into one of my videos sometime. <laughs> 
But when I was building television sets, um, I worked with a guy who was, was at Zenith. <laughs> Zenith is a very old television company, way in the way back days. And he, he said, you know, Zenith had this catchphrase in the 1950s and 60s, which was, uh, the quality goes in before the name goes on. And then they put the, the Zenith name on the front of the instrument or whatever it was, right? The quality goes in before the name goes on. He says, inside the company, inside Zenith, it was the quality goes in before the name falls off. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, uh, I digress. Uh, I think we have a working radio. I do. Uh, should we take a look at the uh, spectrum? Uh, uh, should we take a look at the spectrum? Spectrum. Let's see. Let's, uh, yeah, spectrum. Transmit. Power up. 50%. Power up. 100%. Looks very clean. It's very clean. Yay. All right. She's a beauty. All right. I hope you enjoyed that series. I think people like me working on radios. It's not my main thing, but I do like working on them. Um, and again, thanks to uh, Robert to donate uh, beautiful radios to the channel. We did get a lot of videos out of it, so it worked out well and I uh, got to use my test equipment. That's always the best thing is, uh, why do I have all this test equipment if I don't use it? And uh, so I do enjoy, I do enjoy using them and uh, that's what they're there for. So anyway, hope you, go, hope you enjoyed it.